I have spent the majority of my life in ministry and in the nonprofit sector, with a lot of my resources and time being spent in the areas of assisting people out of poverty. After 30 years of professional experience, I've come to this conclusion that poverty is a system with very predictable outcomes. And these outcomes target groups of people that are overrepresented in the arena of poverty. The overwhelming majority of clients who come through our program to end homelessness and domestic violence are men, women, and children of color. When we go down to the shelters for inner city outreaches to serve clothing, hygiene kits, food, it's almost exclusively black and brown men and women. When I accompany our clients to, to defects to get food stamps activated or to seek other forms of temporary assistance, that room is always filled with black and brown people. When I visit the jail or advocate for someone in court or show up at a probation office, what I see filling that courtroom, that jail, that prison, that probation office is, is people of color. When I go to the emergency room or some kind of charity medical clinic, what I see is black and brown people who are struggling the most with health outcomes and health care. In most apartment complexes and low-income housing, what you see is minority groups who are occupying and living in these kind of housing options. Some say the system is broken and needs to be fixed. I say the system is working perfectly as it was designed to work with all the proper biases to keep the dominant group in power and to subjugate others. The bias in this discrimination is not as obvious as it was decades ago or even centuries ago, but they are definitely still there in subtle, covert, and clandestine forms. There are biases in all of our systems. In the criminal justice system, one in three black males will spend time behind bars. That number for white males is one in 17. Right now, there are more black men in the prison system than there were enslaved in 1850. There are biases in our economic systems. White families on average have 11 to 15 times more wealth than black families. The 400 wealthiest people in the US have more money than the entire African American population as a whole. 72% of whites enjoy home ownership. That number for blacks is 42%. There's biases in our healthcare. Whites outlive blacks. Uh, African Americans will develop on average chronic diseases a decade before whites do. Infant mortality rates, 11 out of 1,000 black infants will die. That number for white infants is five. There's biases in education. Just check the graduation rates, check the literacy rates, check the suspension rates, and you'll see disparity right down racial lines. There's a system in place and it's working exactly as it was structured to do. 400 years ago when European colonists hijacked this country and killed its indigenous inhabitants, they set up a society to benefit white men at the expense of everyone else. In 1776, when we declared our independence and we set up a new country with a new government, one of the first laws passed from the new Congress was to establish citizenship for exclusively white men. And from that day until the day that we're in now, it is still white men who are the dominant group. The Georgia legislature is 66% white men. So why should we vote for Greg Kennard, yet another white man? Well, at this point, it's just a matter of practicality. There needs to be a few of us who are conscious of the system to get involved in the system, to disrupt it, reshape it, and reimagine it, and to use our privilege to elevate other diverse influences and to amplify other diverse voices. Dr. King said, true compassion is not just flinging a coin at a beggar, but it comes to see that an edifice that produces beggars needs restructuring. Most of the founding fathers were slave owners, and I do not give them a pass for that. I don't care if their name is Washington, Jefferson, Madison, or Franklin. But where I will give them credit is that they established founding documents that have enough flexibility so that we can amend and evolve America into a more perfect union. And we can do that through the democratic election process. We, the people, can become founders ourselves. 
and to establish a freer society, a fair and just society, a more equitable society. I see what the prophet Isaiah saw when he said, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain shall be made low. The crooked place is straight, the rough place is plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and we will all see it together. We will all see it together. I'm Greg Kennard. I'm running for House District 102. Go vote May 22nd and let's be that change.